Oh, yeah, you can bet I'm going to itch me where it scratches. Hey, wait, is that a sign of Corona? <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is the Freakers Ball right here live on RealLibertyMedia.com on Friday, July 31st, 2020, the very end of July uh, for this bizarre year that we're currently in. Anyway, hi and howdy to all the folks out there to the Freakers Ball. Uh, I am Gremner. Moose Girl will be along shortly. But if you're listening in uh, from the reallibertymedia.com website on the Freakers Ball Show page, maybe you're there on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia or on possibly on reallibertymedia.org or who knows where. You could be anywhere. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to all y'all to the Freakers Ball. We're going to have a good time tonight. Well, we're going to try to have a good time tonight. We usually do. It's usually not that hard to do. On the Frigger's Ball, you know. <laughs> but if you're not over here in the chat, come on over to the chat, uh, which is you can get to on uh, reallibertymedia.com or rlmradio.xyz. Uh, th- those places, that's that's uh, that's where the chat is uh, basically located, unless you have your own IRC client, in which case it's uh, freenode, irc.freenode.net. Pound, pound, Real Liberty Media. And you'll be able to come on in there and talk to people like myself and the Mighty Moose Girl. Hello, yes. Ma- yes, and her. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and all kinds of other folks. They're here in the chat with us tonight. We got it. We got a great group, don't we? Yep. We got Cowboy Tech and Trust No One and Captain Vinny Ziani, Zany, whatever. Um, <laughs> Rome's, Rome's, oh, he's Trust No One. I already mentioned him. And whoever else, is, I, I, I see Ben Wall popping in and out. I think he's here. Hey, ben, how you doing? I, I, I imagine Miss Kate, Miss Chloe, and and I think Donna was here just shortly ago. Hey, Donna, how are you? Uh, we got a whole bunch of other folks though in in the in the chat list. And, uh, some are around, some are not. And uh, hi to all of y'all. Yes, hello. Say my name, he says. You little. <laughs> why, why, you little. Oh, anyway. Oh. <laughs> so how are you doing, Moose? Hanging in there, you know. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's going. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just tired of this shit. Well, who's not? I, I mean. This, this year has just been fucking you know, it, up. It, it, oh, it, my God. It, it's, it's, it's a messed up year for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's stuff's been messed up for a while. This yeah, this, true. This, this this little uh, this this little fake coronavirus stuff. I, I just you know. Um. <laughs> I was just thinking the other day how through my life, seeing the the destruction of this country ever since I was a little kid. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not, it doesn't make you feel good. You know, I mean, you don't feel good. <laughs> you just right. realize when you learn the stuff, you learn what it's all about, what they're all about and all the bullshit and the lies and just everything. Yeah. It just doesn't make you feel, it doesn't give you a warm, fuzzy feeling, you know? Right. Right. It just doesn't. And it's just, it, it, I don't know. I try not to let it get to me, you know? Um, I'm just, I just, the diff, the, the disparity between the, okay, so now we don't have a middle class right now, okay? We really don't. No, I haven't had for quite a while. No, and, but there's people out there that still think they are middle class. I don't know how that works. I, I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever been like middle class as, you know, and per the definition. Well, I, I would say I would say I had what is considered a middle class salary for a while mm-hmm. until I just threw it all away and said, No, I don't I don't need it <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, when you're um But you're I mean you you're just a s one guy. Like you didn't raise kids, you didn't have a wife. No, you didn't, no, you know, no, I know, but I'm I'm that, just saying the the salary. You avoided all that part. <laughs> right. Well, but what I'm saying is, is the salary range is pretty much what determines right what class you're in, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, and so I mean, like I said, when when I when I decided to get rid of all that crap, leave San Diego, uh, be be done with all that corporate working stuff, yep. I, I was making a nice salary. And, yeah. Uh, and I just I couldn't. I had enough of it. I, I'd had enough. And, and uh, right. And it wasn't so much. I mean, it wasn't so much the, the work that was a problem. Mm-hmm. Although it wasn't that. It was it was getting very annoying. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't so bad. It was just the city was getting so crowded and and turning into this, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, socialist land in California, you know. So, yeah. Uh, so, so I ran. I ran away. Ran away out here to the, <laughs> to the, to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, it, it, even people that... Let's say you have a three hundred thousand dollar house or a five hundred thousand dollar house. Right. I mean, those people think that they're rich. I think they are not. But they are not. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> when I say the disparity between the rich and the poor, I'm talking the mega mega rich. So if you if you you know depending on where you draw the line, none of us are in the middle class anymore. Yeah, I none mean. Of us. Yeah, there, there, that's there's, gone. There's, there's, okay, there's, this middle class is gone. Right. I and mean, people, uh, I, I mean, between the the uber rich and the average guy out there working, making a couple hundred grand a year, yep. um, that you're not middle. You're not between, you're, it's not between the, the poor people making 20000 a year and you making 200000 a year. Right. I'm sure you feel real good compared to them. But, oh, you're, yeah. but you're nothing compared to those billion dollar guys. Right. So. You're nothing. <laughs> yep. And I mean, I don't know. I guess people that are in a certain income bracket have gotten used to being able to pay their bills and have a boat and have a cabin or go on a vacation and. I guess they think that's that's okay, you know. And that to some people, and that I I, I get that. That yeah, would be a good but, life, but, but you know. But they're in hawk up to their eyeballs too. Right, and that would be a good life. But at the same time, how are they? You know, I don't know. Are they happy? Are they? You know, does their money make them happy? Oh, the money doesn't make you happy. Money never makes you happy. No, no. It's not about the money. It's about how how you actually live your life. So. Um, right. And, and you know, I I I I'd say that. If you think money's what's going to make you happy or not, you know some of the poorest people in the world are have living the happiest lives ever. Right. So. No, I yeah. And, no, but, I wasn't that, saying that money is happiness. No, I was not saying that at but, all. But, but that, of course, is not to exclude uh, the rich bastards. That, that there's some of them that are really happy too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'd say there's probably more of the the lower end folk, lower end. Financially, folks that are happy than than there are in the upper end, because those people are always they're never satisfied with what they got generally. So, right. And 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 poor people are are generally more satisfied with what they got. They're glad to have what they have. They're, they're happy for that loaf of bread or <laughs> whatever. I don't know. I was just watching a video the other day, a live feed from Skid Row, L.A. Skid Row in L.A. That's still there. They still have Skid Row. And it, oh my God! It went. It goes on for blocks. Yeah. And it's bad. It didn't really. It. It like. I, I had like an emotional reaction from it. You know. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what. It's come to now. Is the mega rich are taking over the world? Okay. Yeah. The rest of us are fucked. Basically, that's what they want to do is fuck the rest of us. Okay. Yeah. And if you're not one of them, then you're one of us. And you can act like you're not, but you are. And I don't know anybody that's a mega billionaire. I don't know anybody. No, I I don't. I don't either. So, and I'm pretty sure the people in the chat room are not billionaires either. I don't know, Benoit, so, Benoit might be a billionaire. Uh, he, they might be. Yeah, yeah. But, no. he's, he's I mean, I don't want to make assumptions. There could be, like, a Jeff Bezos type in our chair. I don't know. <laughs> there could be. But, um, <laughs> I'm serious. I guess now. my point is, yeah. it's just, in, a, in, in this country, when I was a kid, and you're, you know, you're taught, 
oh, you work hard and you do this and you do that and you fucking, you'll, your dreams will come true. You'll get everything that oh, you want. Well, well, the world's well, your oyster. Well, well, Go well, out there and <laughs> well, do your thing and you can do anything you want. Okay. Well, what was the big promise <laughs> or the, the, the big, the big thing? Anyone can grow up to be president. And right. Said, and then, and then, which at that, you know, when you're a little kid, that sounds great. But as you start growing up, you're like, who the hell would want that job? That's a right, horrible. That that's, job. A, that's a that's the worst job in the world. <laughs> right. I can't imagine. And just the way it's set up, you have to basically become. You have the same mindset as those billionaire people. You know, and some of them aren't nice people. No, they're mostly demented freaks. Yeah, so you got to, in order to really be successful, according to them, yeah. you have to go to the four-year university, and it better be a good one. You know, and it better be a good well, one. At least, you at get least. a really good job at a really good corporation. You know, yeah. but then the, these kids, you know, and you're still basically a kid when you graduate college. If you go from the age of 18, you go four years, you're 22 years old. And guess what you're looking at? Not much. At least a hundred grand in debt <laughs> from a student loan for getting this yeah. education that you feel you have to have because you have to get a good job. And the only way to get a really good job and be like CEO is to go to Harvard or Yale, you know, one of them type of schools. And you're right, though. It isn't all, but we live in such a materialistic society. It's been forced down our throat so much, Grim. Yeah, well, that could be changing. So with all this uh, yeah, uh, global, it's going to be changing. Yeah, with with this global economic shutdown, I would say the materialism stuff is probably uh, going to fade away a bit. The yeah. what stuff? The materialism. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I uh, think people. Well, you know, it, it's it's, know. it's it's one it's one of the products I, I think uh, of the whole uh, lockdown thing. Everybody's mm -hmm. got to stay at home. Uh, and be with their families all the time, uh, be with their kids and uh, and things like that. I think I think it it, it changes uh, a lot of people's attitudes uh, toward mm -hmm. what what is really important in life. And I don't I don't right. I don't think that a lot of them, uh, you know, uh, are are really going to to think that much in, into you know that much of their emotion and feeling uh, into their work. At this point, unless they're doing something they really love, um, right? Uh, which most people are not. I mean, uh, right? It, you know, go back a year from a year ago, in the, the, the way everything was the normal world out there. Uh, yeah. Uh, people, people sunk. You know, their their whole everything in, into into their work. At least I did when I mean, for right. for, for many years. I mean, that that was it. I mean, I whatever my. My 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 job was there, and 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 that mm -hmm. was that was it. I mean, pretty much. And uh, you know, you go, you have your house house that you go home and sleep, and then uh, get up in the morning and go right back at it. And uh, so I, it becomes such a grind, you know. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. And, and the, the the maddening part about it for me, and and you can you can work your way up the ladder up the ladder at a company. You can start from the ground level, work your way up, work there for thirty thirty, you know, thirty forty years or whatever. And a lot of people are happy doing that, but it just becomes such a grind. Right. And the 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 prices of everything increase, and your wage doesn't keep up with that increase. And that's how they get you. That's how they keep everybody fucking down. You know what I mean? Yeah. They raise the price of everything else, but your wage doesn't get raised as fast. Right, right. So then it... it you have to save more money. You have to, you know, it, to, to go on a vacation. You have to... You know, a lot of people can't go on a vacation. I mean, no one can right now, but, you know. Um, oh, yeah, the vacations are expensive, so. Uh, yeah. Well, no, you can't fly anywhere. No, no, no. I mean, before that. Right, yeah. Vacations were, are expensive. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess I'm just watching that footage from Skid Row in L.A. It really, like, was I was like, wow. Yeah. And that's that was just L.A. and L.A. is a huge city. I get it, but we have that shit in Eau Claire too. Oh, shit. we don't have the tents and the sidewalks yet, 
but we have the riverbank, and they find places to hide out, you know, yeah. wherever they, on the river or wherever they, they go to, because we only have shelter for so many people, and the shelter doesn't hold all the homeless people we have. So they had to move the shelter to the Hobbs Ice Center because of COVID, because so they could spread all the cots apart, you know? Right, right. And now they got to get out of there because they want to reopen the facility for for what it's for. But it's just it, – it, it just makes you wonder, you know, you know that you've been lied to your whole life when you see this, the, what's become of this country. Sure, sure, sure. You know, you see it so in your face now. It's in our face. and And we don't want it here. <laughs> and a lot of people are facing homelessness right now because of this stuff. Yeah. This, you know, this shutdown. The fallout from this is 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 immeasurable. You can't. We don't even know yet. No, there's no We're way. Still to, in it. There's there's no way to know where the where the bottom is. I guess to say. Right. Uh, I I don't I don't have have but, a lot of faith right now. No, it's not that you know there because. All these businesses are dead. I mean, they're bankrupt. So. Right. Restaurants. They're, they're, they're I, I know this just one restaurant. They're well, trying to sell it more, up there. It's, it's far more than restaurants, but restaurants. Right. Well, they're not going to sell it. Who's going to buy a, a restaurant or a bar right now? I can't imagine. No one. Because yeah. they can't be open. Yeah. But what were you saying? It's more than just bars. or it's, Yeah, it's more. It's far more than that. A lot of well, yeah. You know, mom and pop retail stores, they've been all over the place. And, uh, and you know, they, they were already struggling against all the big boys. Out there, right? So uh, all those hardware, whatever, um, yeah. Th- those places, there's still a lot of family-owned hardware stores out there. At least there were in, yeah. say, February. Um, yeah. So uh, you know how how well any of those will survive? Who's to say? But uh, a lot of them, yeah. You know, you know the, your your state government will say, well, you you little guys, you can't open up, but uh, Home Depot can. Right. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, or, that's or what? what they did. Yeah, right. So I mean, well, when Walmart first came around, they destroyed a lot of the small town pop, mom and pop businesses. Yeah. So yeah. Walmart's been doing that for twenty years. For, well, right, but but I mean those that were you know? <laughs> those that were still surviving on community right. on community support and such. So, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's let's uh, do some music here. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, Kate. By the way, for the uh, the links there to to Anthem. Um, I, somebody, uh, one of my people that I follow on Twitter, Golf Girl, uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. tweeted tweeted out about Anthem earlier this week. I was like, oh, I, I never read that one. Uh, oh, but, okay. But she just had the fee article. She didn't have the actual uh, the book there that you have on the HTM. So that's great. I'll I'll uh, I'll throw that into into the blog too. So. Um. Oh, well, this is an article on it? And then well, there's... it's an article, and then there's the actual book there. Oh, oh, okay. oh I see it's it. It's the okay. Gutenberg one there is the, is the actual. Oh, okay. And then the other one is, and we'll talk about that after. Okay, uh, after. sounds good. After the set, yeah. All right, I'm going to bookmark that one. Yeah, it's a novella. It's not an actual novel. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's all right. We, we, we like novellas. Uh, I don't, cool. I don't, I don't mind quick reading. <laughs> right. Alrighty, oh, enjoy, people. Boy. So we'll be back. Are you a? Uh... <laughs> All right, that's the uh, cowboy tech request there. Chip Taylor and the new Ukrainians with "fuck all the perfect people." Before that, we had a Moose Girl request, the Beatles, Think for Yourself, and we kicked it off with Hailstorm and Freak Like Me. Are you a freak like me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, fireworks going off again. What the hell is the deal? Oh, fireworks. Woohoo. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, we get them there. Uh, they've, been, they've been going on for weeks. <laughs> yeah. They kind of st- settled down a little bit here, but some people still let them off. But yeah. it's like, whatever. Right, right. So, uh, anyway, um, oh, hang on a second. I'm gonna... <sighs> uh, 
Hey, hey, oh my god. What? Oh, they're just showing a picture of on Facebook. And it's a picture of Obama giving the some award and the, the the ones in the picture and it's all separate you know, occasions, but the first one's Ellen, second one's Tom Hanks, third one's Bill and Melinda Gates, fourth one is Bill Clinton, and the fifth one is Oprah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> gnarly. All right. Yeah, that's <laughs> really gnarly. Um but anyway, you know, Okay, so Tom Hanks is a Greek citizen now. He got the fuck out of the U.S. because someone's got some dirt on that motherfucker. Well, that and also down there in Greece, you're allowed to be a pedo. Right. It's called, <laughs> it's like a, what a, a psychological condition or something. Oh, Medal of Honor. Thank you, Kate. Um, yeah. <laughs> and these are not honorable people, okay? Ellen is under fire right now for being a, having her staff treat her employees terrible. Yeah. Tom Hanks is suspected of being a pedophile, and he's moved out, moved to Greece now. Bill and Melinda Gates, let's not even fucking go there. You know what, how evil they are. Right. Bill Clinton rode on the fucking, was buddies with Epstein, and fucked little girls. Oprah, let's not even go there. I mean, come on. That's right. Obama gave them all medals of freedom. Oh, medals of freedom. Oh, okay. Yeah. All um, right. That, that, as as uh, Trump put it, the highest civilian honor somebody can receive. Right, yeah. uh huh. Yeah. I guess being a pedophile and being a fucking evil fucking murderer and being a perv gets you a medal of honor or medal of some kind of fucking medal from the president. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if if you're one of them, sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, aside from that, I'm totally different from that. Okay. Uh, uh, remember last week uh, when I. Did the thing and, and then uh, the uh, music. I couldn't hear the music for the opening yep. song there. Uh, yep. Well, I found the problem, but it was really weird because everything was all set right, but mm -hmm. I had to set it wrong and then set it back to right in order to get it to work. I, I, I it was some some issue with OBS. I don't I don't know what it was, but something. Anyway, uh, I wanted to bring up the uh, the butt the butt broadcasting tool. There's a new version out. Well, a newer, uh, early in July it came out, um, and, and, but broadcast using this tool, and they've come up with some night, nice, some uh, some uh, cool uh, new features that they've put in, um, which I didn't even realize. I was on one zero point one point one nine, and they're up to zero point one point two two. So oh. It was, uh, it was three versions that I missed. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of cool new features. Uh, Good. There in 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 the newest version of Butt. So anybody out there using Butt, you, you might want. I'll put the link into the post show blog so you can go get it. But uh, oh, check, okay. check out these new features and the new one um, has the ability to check for new versions by itself. So um, oh yeah yeah and, and a bunch okay. of other a bunch of other pretty neat stuff there too uh, that they that they fixed uh, in that time. One of them, by the way, is mm -hmm. the support for SSL for IceCast. Which um, right now we're broadcasting without the SSL. Uh, which okay. It doesn't really make any difference, uh, but mm -hmm. but since I have the ability, I want to use it, right? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, with, with my new streaming service with with the Voscast, I have that. With the with the previous one, I did not. Which, by the way, those assholes never wrote me back or nothing or said anything to me. <laughs> so they got like a free year's worth of. <laughs> my money um <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> anyway so for the broadcasters out there if you're even whether you're a broadcaster here or somewhere else mm -hmm. uh if you use butt go check out the new version because uh yeah it's got a lot, okay. of, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff to it okay cool. yeah so uh, anyway i was mentioning before the break that uh, kate mm -hmm. had posted the link uh, to to the Ayn Rand's Ayn Rand, however you want to say your name, um, uh, book Anthem or novella Anthem, um, and she said she printed it out as a PDF. It was 51 pages, so it's pretty short. It's quick read. Could should be a quick read for anybody. So uh, yep, check that out. And here's the article that uh, was, that I found posted over on Twitter about that. 
Uh, it's on C.org, the Foundation for Economic Education. Okay. Uh, how Ayn Rand's dystopian novella anticipated cancel culture. It's uh, <laughs> apparently one of her lesser-known works of fiction and paints a disturbingly familiar picture. So, <laughs> here it is. Recent legislators, activists, and education reformers have promised... Get off that. Have promised to lead us into a new world of equity. No longer will some groups have a different lifestyle from others. No longer will some groups have a different education from others. There will be reform, or else, Hank Newsom warns, we will burn down this system and replace it. Which kind of looks like what's going on, right? Uh, so for a preview of these glories... Yes. We, we only we only have to open Ayn Rand's anthem. In this dystopian novella, collectivists achieve their ideal by burning cities and books and implementing central planning. Now everyone is equal, equally poor, equally housed, equally limited in what they can say and do and think, just like what's going on. Uh, yep. If as... If, if, as Jennifer, Jen Mathusanti, whatever, observes, dystopian fiction helps us understand the dangers we face when none is more relevant to this moment than Rand's novella. When Anthem, or what Anthem clarifies, is the real significance of collectivist ideals and language, which undermine not only our rights, but our ability to articulate them. Now, just a sidebar on the collectivism there, um, because a lot of people think that JFK was this great, awesome president. Mm -hmm. And as I explained back on Monday during mm -hmm. the All Connected show, Kennedy, JFK, was a huge collectivist, and he wanted a new world order, a, a global government. That was his goal, one of his primary goals, which is why I was so wrong and thinking that, that the Federal Reserve could have been involved in killing him, because mm -hmm. he, he, well, <laughs> all right, because he handed over the keys to one of the people directly involved in the global banking cartel. So uh, his, his, his uh, executive order, 11110, uh, which seemed to mm -hmm. say, we're going to start making our own money, uh, U.S. money uh, backed by, by by gold was that was not what that was about at all. That was his executive order. That one was basically to cancel the printing of silver certificates. Oh, okay. And, and, and hand hand the printing of money over to this global body, uh, and it, that was basically was an add on to a previous executive order. It was not a freestanding executive order. Anyway, back to this. No, it says ideals here, uh, uh, Vinny. <laughs> you can call them ideas, but they're called ideals here. Anyway, so our name is Equity, 7-2521. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. An Anthem opens by foregrounding the triumph of collective, uh, the collective, through the narrator's struggle to express and justify his thoughts. In this world, there is no I, no I at all, only the collective we, which has become synonymous with good. And you know what I feel about we. Yeah. <laughs> the novel opens. It's a sin to write this. It's a sin to think these words no others think and to put them down on paper. No others are to see. And, well, we know. There is no transgression blacker than to do or think alone. And that, that's, base, that's, that's pretty much what they want to get rid of. They want to get rid of individualism. They want to get rid of uh, you being able to think outside of the group think that, that's going on out there. And you see this group think and all the protests going on around uh, everywhere. Uh, it, it's, it's a bit of insanity. Yeah. There's only the Whatever happened to individual? They, they, well, they hate the individuality. They hate it. They hate it. You, Why? I because that way you you get to to, to plan your own thoughts. I, I don't know why they just do. Why don't they want us to be individuals? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you 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 have an idea though. 
Yeah, well, anyway. Oh, we're easier well. to control. We're all the same, right? Right, yeah. You know, everybody everybody goes and gets their vaccination and wears their masks. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess you have to put goggles on now. Oh, fuck that. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then well, got- okay, so my question is, why didn't they, from the get-go, say, have to wear masks, have to wear goggles? Because you know, they, they, it, they, change, they, it changes every fucking day. They they change the narrative to to see once they see what the people will put up with, they throw mm-hmm. something else on there, and see if people will put up with that, and not only put up with it but demand it. Uh, you know, it's not like uh, the people are just putting up with staying at home and wearing masks. They're demanding it, and they're demanding that you do what they do, that you think as the collective. That you be part of the we rather than the I. They don't want I. I is no good. <laughs> oh no, they did the not. The problem with the gloves is you got to change them out after you touch each thing. That's just not practical. And the gloves, freaking, make, if if there is this thing going around, then you got people wearing gloves out there. They're spreading the fucking shit all around because people don't use the gloves properly. They don't even use the mask properly. I see a bunch of people walking around with these goddamn things under their nose. That's that is not effective because if you because they're not sterile anymore. Yeah. Okay. If, let's say you let's have your gloves on and you touch something in the grocery store and you put it in your cart and you go to the next item, you touch that item, you're putting whatever was on that first item onto that second item, and you're spreading it. Wait. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't wash. I've never washed gro- or disinfected groceries when I brought them home. No, no, I, I wash fruits and vegetables before I eat well, them. Yeah, before I sense. before I cook them, whatever. But I'm not I'm not gonna take every potato out of the bag and scrub it. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. I, 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 I'm just not that paranoid. Exactly. I, I'm just not. Uh, I just can't be. And it. it, it yeah, not not, not only goggles, but ear tampons, Cowboy Tech. Yeah, you got to have earplugs, too, now. Ear, ear, okay, ear so does it, what does it remind you of? Tommy. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Everybody. They don't want you to fucking say a goddamn word. They don't want you to really see well, either, because they want you to wear glasses. And they also don't want you to hear what the fuck's going on. It, it reminds me of Tommy. Because it's a mucocal, mucosal... How do they say it? Mucosal? Whatever. Mucus areas. Area. Mucosal area. <laughs> and it, that's how you can get the virus. It can stay, it can be in your ears. Do you, do you, do you, do you, remember, do you remember Tommy? Yes. The, the Who rock opera? Tommy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so do you remember his followers? Yeah. Yeah, they all had to put on their eye shades, put on their yeah. mouth, mouth cork, <laughs> uh, put in their earplugs. Uh, if, if, that's the only way you could follow Tommy is, is to basically do what everybody out there in the world is doing now. I'm just wondering where this this magical pinball wizard is because uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like they're all following the pinball wizard, but he's not there. So I guess Fauci is is the pinball wizard because I guess so. Uh, of course, he's not actually doing any of that. But no. but all, but all the people that that are bowing down before him uh, are doing or are are following his words and uh, not not what he actually does. Uh, anyway, so you guys, uh, I'll put the like I said, the link for this uh, uh, this fee article for about, about Anne Rand's novella into into the blog, so you guys okay. can check it out and you can uh, actually go and uh, download the the book too. Uh, so two. Two counties in Wisconsin, the sheriff's department has said they will not be enforcing the mask mandate. La Crosse County and Washburn County. So far, those are the only two I know of that have said that. I haven't, like, researched the whole, like, I didn't look up Madison News or anything, you know what I mean? Right. Um, Yeah, I just, I'm glad to see that, I guess. I mean, really? (laughs) Most of the people, like I said, they're not, they're putting the mask under their nose. Yeah. Well, now this this next one is a Mm -hmm. satire. However, not too far from the truth or what the truth could be coming. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. 
Dr. Fauci recommends encasing your entire body in bubble wrap to protect against <laughs> coronavirus. <laughs> So, you at a, can't fucking breathe in bubble wrap, all right? Well, that, well, you can't, well, you can't well. fucking breathe. At a press conference Wednesday, Dr. Franchi suggested that Americans cover their entire bodies in bubble wrap, wrap to protect against coronavirus. Studies have shown that this is very effective at stopping the virus, germs, and the oxygen that carries these things. Fauci said, you will no longer have to worry about death by coronavirus. So I'm just a medical doctor, and I can't speak to any other risk factors this may introduce. Of course, Dr. Franchi uh, said that other Washington elites are exempt from the recommendation. I mean, other people should do that, not me, he said, chuckling. I can go to baseball game and stuff without worrying about protecting against that kind of stuff, because I'm a doctor, and viruses and I, we're on good terms. So some doctors quickly held a press conference to point out the dangers of wearing the new full body, uh, full body bubble wrap cocoons, but their video was banned from Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for containing dangerous medical misinformation. At publishing time, Fauci had also pointed out that bubbles are really fun to pop, and admitted that he may have in, informed that that may have informed his recommendation. <laughs> So expect that. Expect that coming up soon. A full, full, full body bubble wrap. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> I read that one earlier, Graham. But nice try. But no, it's good. Yeah. So and and the bit about them, the 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 doctor said, "Hey, wait! If you put that on, you're gonna you're gonna suffocate yourself." Uh, then the, 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 that video was banned from Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, uh, which we'll get to some other stuff that that actually really happened that uh, okay. <laughs> got people banned uh, from from all of those places and their website uh, actually taken down by their hosting provider um, uh, for recommending something that the WHO doesn't like. <sighs> oh God! It's a mad world, mad world. It I is. Say. <laughs> wow. Oh God! Earlier, wow. earlier here in the chat, uh, Rob Works posted up a mm -hmm. a link about from uh, the Truthseeker dot co dot uk, uh, and, and it's called Facts About COVID nineteen. And um, all right, I, I hadn't seen this anywhere else, so thank you for that, Rob. Appreciate it very much. Um, and this is uh, Swiss Policy Research, July twenty twenty. Uh, the only means to fight the plague is honesty, according to Albert Camus back in 1947. Um, okay, according to the latest immunological studies, the overall lethality of corona is about 0.1%, and thus in the range of a severe flu. Uh, for people at higher risk exposure, including healthcare workers, early or prophylactic treatment is essential. In countries like the U.S., the U.K., and Sweden, without a lockdown, overall mortality rate since the beginning of this year is in the range of a strong flu, uh, strong flu season. In mm -hmm. countries like Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, overall mortality rate is in the range of a mild flu season. Even in global hot spots, the risk of death for the general uh, population of of school mm -hmm. and working age is typically in the range of a daily car ride to work. Uh, the, the risk was initially overestimated because many people with only mild or no symptoms were not taken into account. Up to 80% of all test positive persons remain symptom free, even among the 70 to 79 year olds. About 60% remain symptom free. About 95% of all people develop uh, at most, moderate symptoms. Up to 60% of all persons may already have, have, ha, have a certain cellular background immunity to the mm -hmm. new coronavirus due to contact with previous coronavirus, i.e. common cold viruses. The initial, right. the initial assumption was no immunity against the new coronavirus was not correct. Uh, the median age of uh, the median age of deceased in most countries, including Italy, is over 80 years old, 
yeah, for example, 86 years in Sweden. And only about 4% of the deceased had no serious preconditions. The age and risk profile of deaths thus essentially corresponds to normal mortality. In countries, up to two-thirds of all extra deaths uh, occurred in nursing homes, which do not benefit from a general lockdown. Moreover, right. and, well, nobody actually benefits from a general lockdown, but no. Yeah. Moreover, in many cases, it is not clear whether these people really died from corona or from weeks of extreme stress and isolation. <laughs> up to 30% of all additional deaths may have been caused not by corona, but by the effects of the lockdown, panic, and fear. Right. For, for example. The psychological aspect. Right, right. Uh, can affect your health. For example, the treatment of heart attacks and strokes decreased <laughs> by up to 60% because many patients no longer dared to go to the hospital. Right. Uh, e even in so-called corona deaths, it's often not clear whether they died from or with corona, right? Uh, the underlying disease, or if they were counted as presumed cases and not tested at all. However, official figures usually do not reflect that distinction. Uh, many media reports of young and healthy people dying from corona turned out to be false. Many of these young people either did it not die from corona, uh, they had already been seriously ill from undiagnosed leukemia, whatever, or mm -hmm. uh, they were, in fact, 109 years old instead of 9 years old. <laughs> As, uh, only off by 100. Uh, yeah. the, the claimed increase in Kawasaki disease in children also turned out to be false. Uh, the strong uh, increases in regional mortality can occur if there is a collapse in the care of the elderly and sick as a result of infection or panic, or if there is additional risk factors such as severe pollution. Questionable regulations for dealing with deceased sometimes led to additional bottlenecks in funeral or cremation services. Uh, th this article goes on for, for quite a long ways here. But let me mm -hmm. tell you, in case you were wondering about mm -hmm. all these stats and such I'm, uh, I'm yeah. talking about here, they are all linked to the sources in this article. It's all a bunch of nonsense. So um, bear that in mind. I posted this article uh, in my normal posting places on social media after Rob posted it and I read it. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. just what I've been saying all along. Um, <laughs> it's all a bunch of freaking nonsense. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there's, there's a whole bunch. I mean, I only went through uh, in order up to the point I went to, which was about a third, maybe, of that of the of all the stuff in there. So if you've got people out there that that thinking that you know this, this corona is the worst thing ever that's happened in the world, and and you'll see people. I think it was either the WHO or or the CDC uh, posted that the the most uh, fatal virus since 1918, which is a bunch of horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, it is. <laughs> it's total horse shit. So and, anyway, but but that's that's what they're putting out <sighs> there, and in order to keep people in fear and scared, and yeah, it's been working <sighs> for most people. I mean, I went out tonight for just a little bit, and I can tell there's a lot of people, I don't want to do this fucking mass shit. They just don't want to do it, dude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't want to. But, you know, it, <sighs> But a lot of them still do. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, and I, I hate it when people say, well, if you don't wear a mask, then you're a Trump supporter. And like, that is so asinine. Uh, which, which is, like, bizarre. We're totally Get bizarre. over that. How, Get how, over that. How, 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 why is this freaking disease politicized? Right. Why? Uh, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's got nothing to do with anybody's politics. And uh, seriously... People are, they get so nasty over politics. It's like, oh, 
horrible. You're you're at, wishing for people to die and stuff. Right. It's like that's I, really fucked up. I hope they all die. That was that yeah. woman in a Kmart or wherever she was. Right. Well, and it's like talking, who talking, the fuck is ta- anybody to talking, say that someone else should fucking die? Talking that's to ridiculous. talking to little kids. She was yelling this at little kids. Yeah. I hope you all die. What it's is just, wrong with you? <laughs> wow. You are <laughs> fucked up in the head, lady. You know, I, I just, I don't, and even if people are joking about it, that that's not something you joke about. You don't, you just don't put that out there. You, it, it's just, well, the, it's just, those, those that's, are, that's those, mental. Those, okay, those, those that's are, fucking ment- mental. Those are, those are cute texts there, CT. Mentally fucked up. All those right. are cute. Yeah. All right, so speaking of, speaking of Sweden, mm-hmm. you know, from that last, yeah. that last mm-hmm. post. This here is posted on mainstream media on the clap. Okay. Newsweek of all places. Sweden, which never had a lockdown, sees corona cases plummet as the rest of Europe suffers spike. So, <laughs> amid fears of potential second wave of the corona crap across Europe, uh, new infections in Sweden, where the full lockdown measures were not implemented, have mostly declined since late June. A number of new cases per 100,000 people in Sweden reported over the last 14 days since July 29th uh, d- dropped by 54% from the figure reported over 14 days prior to then. According to the latest report, uh, Wednesday from the WHO... Yeah, not Roger Daltrey in the group. The World Health Organization. Meanwhile, in other parts of Europe, the reported large spikes in new cases over the same period, including Spain, France, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands, which have seen increases between 40 and 200% over the last month, according to the latest WHO report. Um, Anyway, so the seven-day rolling average of Sweden's new cases has been dropping consistently since June 29. Its daily case count uh, has, has mostly uh, been mostly decreasing since June 24, when it reported 1,803 new infections, its largest single-day spike since the outbreak began, according to data compiled by Worldometer. The seven-day rolling average of new deaths in Sweden has also been declining since around April 15th, when it reported a record daily death count of 115. The country's largest seven-day rolling averages for new cases and daily deaths uh, stand at 154 and 2, 154 cases, 2 deaths. However, the Scandinavian nation ranks 8th among countries with the highest number of COVID deaths per 100,000. It outranks the U.S. and Brazil, which are the world's first and second worst hit nations in total terms, according to the very untrustworthy, unreliable Johns Hopkins University. Believe, oh God! Believe nothing coming out of Johns Hopkins. Oh no, they're smarter than you, Grim. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> but, they're, yeah, they're, but yeah, I'm they're, sure, they're I, great I, people. I, I'm sure they know what they're talking about, but they're we liars. They are liars. Uh, anyway, they have now been down to zero. They're now down to zero, uh, okay. zero new cases and, <laughs> and zero deaths. And they never went through this lockdown, and their economy's doing fine. Um, like this is this is an instance on Facebook. I'm not going to say the name. This is a post. How come Republicans of Wisconsin are so angry about having to wear a mask? Science isn't a Democrat, you ignorant fucks. No, no, the, 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 the science. <laughs> this is the hate and but vitriol that's coming out of people's the... mouths, and they're posting this shit. I mean, I almost unfriended somebody on there because. She lives out in Colorado or something. She's all pissed off that tourists are coming to her town. Stay home, you fucking bucks. I hope you fucking die. It's like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, just you wishing see, people have lost your minds. Okay, w- w- wishing people's deaths. That's a that's a great it's, thing. Yeah, that's just a great trait to have. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Good, good, great person. Great person you are. Yeah. It's like no one has a right to judge when another person should. Why it should be ended, okay? Exactly, exactly. I mean, who the fuck are you to wish death on other people? You're not fucking a superhero or some fucking Norse god or Greek god or something. Right. No one has the authority to do that. 
Exactly. Hey, we're gonna play some more music here. Okay. So, um, uh, we'll be back after this. Uh, speaking. All right. Speaking of work and the economy, you know. Uh, here we go. All right. Yeah, money for nothing. Let me tell you. <laughs> Banging on the bongos like a chimpanzee. That's a Miss Chloe request there. Dire Straits, money for nothing. Before that, a Cowboy Tech request. Warren Z. Vaughn. Uh, trouble, a little intro trouble there with lawyers, guns, and money on the David Letterman show back in 1988. And we kicked it off with a Kate request there. Jeff Beck. Well, it says NZZ Top, but it, but it was just Billy Gibbons. Uh, there and of course Tal Wilkinfield mm. uh, <laughs> doing Ernie Ernie Ford's uh, sixteen tons. Oh, songs about money and working and not working. And uh, Hansel said he he's uh, never uh, got money, got not, never got paid for doing nothing. But uh, he's doing something wrong. I I used to work for General Dynamics. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. But uh, we would run these uh, tests overnight. You know they would they would pay a like double time or whatever for working these all these crazy hours, uh, but you don't really have to do anything. You start the test, the test would run for four or five hours, so you take a nap, <laughs> and you're getting paid. Uh, well, uh, what was uh, I guess at that point considered outrageous sums of money for doing nothing uh, as a, as a lab tech, uh, but <laughs> yeah, money for nothing. Bunny for freaking nothing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, God. man. I know it's crazy. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just. I've never seen this before. This. Oh yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Oh, this. No, nobody's seen any of this stuff before. It's a. Uh, it's nothing like this has ever. Ha nothing like this has ever happened. I mean, right. shutting down... Not the, in our lifetimes, anyway. Well, they've never shut down the entire global economy for Right. Anything. It's not... Well, they, they didn't complete... Like you said, Sweden didn't shut down, right? Oh, right, but, but you know... The U.S. did. Most countries did. Most most Western mm -hmm. countries did. Uh, yeah, so... <sighs> I know, I know. All okay, right. so someone called the cops because there was a person walking down the road talking to herself on 11th Street, which is, like, in my neighborhood. Uh-huh. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. No, I do that all the time. I don't walk down the I street mean, doing it. But... Right. Why would you call the cops on that? People are just crazy. People are just crazy. I don't know. So, are you uh, are you using hand sanitizer? Well, the normal kind, the stuff I got before this lockdown crap. I I can't stand some of the hand sanitizer out there. It's so terrible, and it's, some of it's got bad stuff in there. Well, that's what I'm going to sell you. Okay. And whether you want to believe them or not, because of who they are, um, yeah. which I would tend to not believe them. But. Not believe them, right? <laughs> The FDA, uh, the FDA has increased its 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 list of toxic hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I press there? I pressed something weird and it, it shifted my focus. Um, <laughs> hang on a second. All right, there we go. Um, okay. So here it is: hand sanitizer recall. FDA list of toxic sanitizer expands to ninety four. Ninety four different uh, hand sanitizers out there. Are, are now toxic, according to the FDA. Uh, and uh, let's see. And they should be avoided after they tested positive for methanol contamination. Now, methanol, as far as I yes. know, is, is not toxic. Um, it, it's not something you want to ingest, but uh, using it as a cleaning agent is perfectly fine. Um, anyway, uh, so for whatever reason, the FDA is saying methanol is toxic, which, of course, if you drink it, it is. It's not good for you. Uh, anyway, so there's a total of 94 hand sanitizers on the updated list of toxic products, some of which have already been recalled while others are uh, being re recommended for recalls. All of the hand sanitizers on the list were apparently produced in Mexico. 
Ah. So okay. there may there may be a political agenda going on here. Okay. According to the FDA, it has seen a spike in the number of hand sanitizer products labeled to contain ethanol. So they tell you right on there, it's got ethanol, but have tested, uh, uh, what? They have tested, wait a second, let me read that again. The number of hand sanitizer products labeled to contain ethanol, but have tested positive for, oh, for methanol. They have methanol. methanol. I was going to say, isn't it methanol? Well, Ethanol is See, like they, the gas they, or the they, corn product. They, they got it all confused here. Yeah, you don't want to rub your hands with methanol. That no. Would, that would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the complete list, there's a link here on the FDA site. Uh, the FDA first warned consumers in June about nine hand sanitizer products to avoid due to the possible presence of methanol. Two weeks later, more brands that tested positive for methanol were added. The substantial uh, methanol exposure can result in nausea, vomiting, headache, blurred vision, permanent blindness, uh, seizures, coma, permanent damage to the nervous system, or death, according to the FDA. Uh, mm-hmm. If you have any illicit hand sanitizer products, the FDA says, throw them out, you wasted your money uh, uh, <laughs> immediately, and uh, get some, uh, and do it in a appropriate hazardous waste container now i don't know where you find an appropriate hazardous waste container there's not ha- there's not hazardous waste containers out there on every corner or nothing right anyway it says don't flush them or pour them down the drain which okay good idea uh, mm-hmm. but you can throw them out in the trash and you'll be fine yeah. they'll go mm-hmm. into a landfill and at that point but uh yeah, yeah let's see so, here yeah, you, you don't you don't want you don't want uh, uh, methanol on your hands. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of places are buying, you know, whatever is available out there because you can't find the the good stuff, and um, so people are just buying whatever and putting it in the old hand sanitizer container. Right. So there's no way when you go to the stores, I know a lot of those places are putting hand sanitizer out now. And sometimes I use, I've use i used it a couple of times. I stopped use, doing that now because I'm like, it just stinks really bad. It's just, it's gross. Yeah, yeah. It's gross. You don't want to use that crap. I would suggest not doing it. Right. Okay. Now, um, you may have heard a thing this week about a group of doctors called America's Frontline Doctors. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't hear okay. about it. But. Well, it's a group of doctors, and they went out there to try and set the record straight on hydrochloroquine. And okay. and so they, they went out there, they did a big press conference, and they posted up a video on YouTube and posted it some various other places. And immediately what happened was YouTube took down their, their video and banned them. Twitter mm-hmm. Twitter banned them. Uh, Facebook removed their video and banned them. It's a group of doctors. Now, I'm going to... And, and also, their website was pulled. Their, their, webs, their website was pulled wow. by their hosting provider. So um, they have since re-gotten a new, new website... Uh, it's America's Frontline Doctors Summit dot com. It's mm-hmm. about a, it's about a twenty minute video. I watched it earlier today. Well okay. worth watching. Uh, all okay. all it says on here is American life has fallen casualty to massive a massive disinformation campaign. We can speculate on how this has happened and why it has continued, but the purpose of the inaugural White Coat Summit is to empower Americans to stop living in fear. If Americans continue to let the so-called experts and media personalities make their decisions, the great American experiment of a constitutional republic with a representative democracy will cease. Now, they go through this here. uh, A couple dozen doctors they have there, um, which I don't know why they're all wearing their white lab coats, but they are. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but but, but uh, they go through there and they explain all of their, their credentials and how long they've been uh, sub- subscribing to hydrochloroquine for SARS and for other coronaviruses. 
uh, and, and how well they've worked, and they've been terrific, great stuff. Uh, and why do, you, why, do you, why do you think all these were pulled? Why, what do you think? They don't want you to know the truth. Well, for a couple reasons. One is they don't want you to know the truth, obviously, because yeah. they, want, they want to push out uh, their version of a cure or a vaccine to, to make right. trillions of dollars off of everybody. But the other one, one of the bigger ones, one of, not bigger ones, but one of the big ones is Trump. Trump said, I use hydrochloroquine. And it right. works. It works for me. It works as a prophylactic using it, you know, before, before you get the disease. And if you do get the disease, it'll cure it. It'll fix it. And, and so they, they, the, so, uh, of course, uh, the, the leftists, mega leftist media, the World Health Organization as well, they don't want you using, uh, the hydrochloroquine. Uh, right. Because if it, if they did, if it was allowed to be used and it worked, then Trump would be proved correct, and that would be bad for them. Right. Bad, bad for their agenda. Uh, anyway, the yep. video, the video's there in that link that I just posted, uh, and this will be in the in the post show blog as well. Um, uh, again, you can't find this video on YouTube anymore. It's just not out there. So, um, <sighs> yeah, something, well. something something to consider. Um, uh, and then uh, the other one uh, that I came across on this situation. Uh, is on zerohedge.com. It's about the website Breitbart, which is a mega righty, kind of crazy righty stuff, um, uh, as opposed to the crazy lefty stuff, which, you know. Yeah, it's also the treatment yeah. for lupus and, uh, I, I, and people with malaria. Uh, all, I mean, it works for a lot of stuff, a lot of various things. And yeah. for, for them to, to ban hydrochloroquine, of course, they say, oh, we're only banning it for, for, for corona people. Um, is it on BitChute? Uh, JJ is saying uh, it's on the other it other video site, so maybe it's on BitChute. Um, that would that would make sense if it were. I I haven't looked on BitChute for it, but they have it there on their website. Like I said, it's like a twenty minute video. It's well worth watching. Anyway, on uh, Zero Hedge here, Breitbart is still suspended from Twitter after after posting that video, the viral HCQ video, and a, a doctor. <laughs> the, the the main doctor in the video lost her job, was fired from her job o over posting this video, telling you the truth, the information mm -hmm. uh, that that is accurate and actual. Uh, so I'll, I'll look for it on, on uh, Bitchu. Thanks for JJ for that. Uh, so anyway, here it is. Breitbart News is still unable to post to their 1.4 million followers on Twitter after their account was locked and suspended for posting the viral video of the pro-HCQ doctors at the heart of the latest debate over Silicon Valley censorship. Uh, so tw Twitter is punishing a news organization for live streaming a press conference held by a congressman and licensed medical doctors. Breitbart News lodged an appeal with Twitter on Tuesday. Uh, nearly 48 hours later, Twitter has yet to respond or restore Breitbart's ability to post. Uh, it, it took Zero Hedge months to get back up there. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was also about a hydrochloroquine that, that Twitter got suspended. Oh, wow. I mean, that uh, Zero Hedge got suspended yeah. from Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Twitter has not replied to Breitbart News' request for comment or on how long such a review is expected to take. Twitter took down the video and locked Breitbart's account shortly after uh, similar censorship by YouTube and Facebook. Uh, okay, let me get down here to, to the, uh, the, the thing here about the doctor. Just days after the establishment via its big tech partners and liberal media propagandists entirely disappeared a viral video of a dozen doctors discussing their real-life experiences of treating COVID-19 and, in some cases, using the extremely dangerous, in quotes, medicine. Uh, if the mainstream media is to be believed, hydrochloroquine and getting children back to school as the founder of America's Frontline Doctors, Dr. Simone Gold had been fired from her job as an emergency medicine specialist in Los Angeles, California, and I, I said she's the, she is the main um, uh, main person in that video, or the, the the one that that opens it for you. So 
Uh, as previously noted in the video, Dr. Gold said, We are here because we feel as though the American people have not heard from all the expertise that's out there uh, all across the country. She's also the organizer of an open letter signed by more than 600 doctors calling on Trump to end the lockdown. The letter described widespread state orders keeping businesses closed and children home from school as a mass, mass casualty incident with exponentially growing health consequences, as we talked about before in the facts about COVID. Uh, uh, the video was entirely disappeared from the web, except if you know where to look, uh, within hours, within hours. Uh, they, <laughs> they want none of that out there. Uh, and two days ago, uh, Dr. Gold stated in a recent tweet that our website host, Squarespace, never used them, has just completely and arbitrarily shut down our website, claiming a violation of their terms of service. <sighs> They 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 do not oh, want wow. they do not want the truth out there. They no, want, they, they don't. They they want you to be locked in your homes and in fear and afraid. They don't want you to know that this is a cure. This is a preventative as well. And, and yep. They they are so afraid of this drug, this mm -hmm. naturally occurring drug uh, out right. there. Quinine. It's quinine. And, and they, they make various derivatives off of the quinine, and it's worked, and it's been approved by the FDA for 65 fucking years uh, for, yeah. for, for uses. Uh, not, not new. Not, 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 new. Not, not only for malaria, but all kinds of off-label uses. And they, yep. they used it to cure people uh, from, from SARS, from SARS, which this is, that's what corona is. It's SARS. Uh, yeah, it is. And then they also go through and they prove that all, all the stuff they said about, you know, people getting all these heart palpitations or whatever from this was a bunch of nonsense. It's, it's wrong. It's false information. And, and, and they don't, they want you to think, no, 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 you take this, you're going to die from all kinds of heart complications or whatever. Uh, but then, you know, there's other articles out there that say, okay, well, if you get, if you get the corona, even after you're fixed from it, you're going to have problems with your heart. And with other yeah, they're saying that now. So, uh, why? How could you blame that on the hydrochloroquine if that's what happens after you get the corona? Which I, I don't actually believe that either. But um, uh, now, now they're also saying that it will uh, give you permanent hearing loss as well. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, did I forget to put that? I think I forgot to put that other previous link in there. Let me get that back up here. Oh man, I, I just you know. <laughs> I know. It, I'm it, tired of it, dude. I'm like, ugh. every day it's something new, something more. Yeah. And it's like, oh god. Uh, and, and, and so the, the lies, the lies are just right. Outrageous and continuous. And yes. I, I, I just I, and, and and then the, I people mean people believe them though. And, they, and, and there's all know, the, all the, the government's all the, not lying this time, Graham. Oh, of course not. This, this time yeah. it's different. It's all new and different. Yeah. This time. Corona Bologna, exactly, JJ. <laughs> Man. Yep, I, and that's why uh, they want us to wear goggles and masks so we don't say anything, we don't see really well. No, and, no. It, it, yep. It's 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 insanity. I just... <sighs> yeah. Um. So, I just found this on RT.com. Uh, bubble indemnity. Big pharma firms will not be held accountable for side effects of corona COVID vaccine. So that's nothing new. They've had indemnity for all their other vaccines, too. Oh, sure, but, sure, sure. You know, they want to make sure ahead of time that, you know, if there's any side effects or deaths, we're not, we're, it's not our fault. Right. Uh, yeah, it is, because you created the shit. Well, that, that's, a, that's a whole different story. That, but, yeah. Uh, they, don't, they don't want to talk about that. That's not. No, that's, they don't. Oh, don't be talking about that. Um Okay, anyway, uh, Kate said she hadn't heard about the ear thing, but uh, uh, she may have heard this article. I, I don't know. Coronavirus can hide 
in human ears, new research finds. Uh, this is on RT.com, uh, posted on yesterday. So, uh, researchers from Johns Hopkins, <laughs> them again, <laughs> those scumbags, oh my God. Uh, found that corona, uh, which causes corona, hiding in unexpected place, inside and behind the human ear. Uh, a team of um, otolorogenologists, what? I don't know what that word is. And pathologists discovered that, that the corona can comfortably settle in the middle ear and the mastoid region of the head behind the ear, which contains several hollow spaces believed to cushion it against trauma and protect the middle and inner ear. Doctors autopsied three patients who had tested positive for corona and were symptom symptomatic for corona prior to their health, their death, I mean, uh, their health. Uh, they, they noted there, there were many other factors and comorbidities comorbidities that affect the colonization of the mastoid and middle ear with corona, and these may differ in the living host. Uh, there may be significant differences uh, from dying from corona versus dying with corona, they said. Yeah, you think, yeah. but you're, you're still going <laughs> to re report them all as, as corona. Uh, anyway, the new discovery means that otolorodontologists whatever, uh, who, who might have previously been more relaxed while examining their patients, I guess those are ear people, uh, are at direct risk of catching the virus. Uh, so the study by John Hopkins uh, autopsy program lasted six months and was published on July 23rd. Wait a minute. Six months. So, yeah. Okay. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying your timeline. Uh, <laughs> despite admitting the limitations of the study, the research nevertheless advised that medical personnel can take extra pre protection measures, like wearing masks, how's that going to protect your ears, or powdered, powdered air purifying respirators when performing ear exams or an ear surgery. Uh, oh. John Hopkins says, don't, don't relax. Don't relax those social distancing. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, John Hopkins. Oh, All my right. God. Now here, <laughs> so you, you get up in the morning, you're driving to wherever you're going to, yeah. work or whatever, and you hadn't had, had time to grab breakfast. So you decide to pop on into your, your local Mickey D's. And you have a yeah. egg, egg McMuffin, uh, egg McMuffin. But but you're not uh, but but you're not wearing a mask. You don't have a mask. Yeah. Well, McDonald's is gonna call the cops on you. Oh great! Oh, that's uh, awesome. Uh, uh, McDonald's CEO says law enforcement may be called on customers who refuse to wear masks. So there's a happy awesome. meal. There's a happy meal for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> yep. I mean, okay, so what? Okay, this is what cracks me up: is the mask mandate for Wisconsin goes in effect tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, so why not? What's different between today, where it's not in effect, and tomorrow, where it is in effect? There's no difference. <laughs> it, it, it makes no sense. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. All right, so uh, it says here, McDonald's appears to be serious about face masks. Yeah, uh, fuck McDonald's. You shouldn't be eating that shit anyway. No, you should not. But McDonald's CEO, and I never knew this guy's name before, Krip, Chris Kempzinski, whatever. <laughs> Kemp Kempzinski. Okay, okay. Anyway, he recently spoke about recent decisions his company has made amid the corona pandemic. Uh, he specifically suggested that law enforcement may be called during situations when a customer won't wear a mask. So, you, <laughs> fuck your happy meal. You're getting you're getting thrown in jail. All right. Uh, Kim, Kim Sinski discussed the mask situation today uh, uh, during an interview with CBS This Morning. The company recently announced that it would be mandating customers and employees to wear masks at all McDonald's locations. Uh, the CEO said, we're spending a lot of time right now in our restaurants making sure 
we can keep our crews safe, making sure we can keep our customers. They're eating your fucking McDonald's food. How are you keeping your customers safe? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're, you're keeping them poisoned. Exactly. Uh, you're poisoning them with their shit food. Says we we have for quite some time required our crew to wear masks. But we thought that in light of what we're seeing, what are you seeing? It's prudent now that we also ask our customers to wear masks in the restaurant as well. Well, how are they supposed to eat your crap? Well, actually, maybe masks in McDonald's is a great idea. Because if you have yeah. a mask on, you can't eat. So you won't be eating their crap. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> this is just all of this. All of this stuff is just so over the top. Blown up this year. Everything's just so it's freaking over the top, man. Yeah. It's craziness. We're playing wow. more music. We're playing more music here. Okay, let's do that. Enjoy, people. Just because. How much of this can I take at that one? I shot? don't know. I can't. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, God. Well, oh, I know. Recently, uh, a man by the name of Peter Green passed away. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, so, there's what, what, gonna be <laughs> break. Wrong, wrong, wrong click. Wrong right. button. <laughs> there's gonna be a Freaker's Ball. There is a Freaker's Ball. It's right there now. is. There it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, right. anyway, uh, okay. Peter Green, um, he, 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 what the hell? That's too, still too wide. R.I.P. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> God, I am having trouble clicking here. Maybe I'm getting the corona in the brain. Uh oh. Maybe it keeps stuck in through my ear, through my headphones. Better get that HCQ yeah, on board. That's right. All right. <laughs> so anyway, he died. Um, and uh, he was—he was a great guitarist. He was an awesome guitarist. Mm -hmm. And he was a found one of the founding members of Fleetwood Mac. Right. Back in the '60s, and um, thanks to Miss Kate for requesting uh, this track here. Oh, yeah. L.A. Woman in the afternoon. Mm, that's the doors there with L.A. Woman from back in 1971. Before that, we had Playing for Peace doing Robert Johnson's Walking Blues. Oh, great stuff. They they do great videos, the the Playing for Peace people, or Playing for Change people. Um, <laughs> why well, I call them play for peace, but peace would be a change. And we kicked it off with Peter Green. I'm going down uh, in memory of Peter Green. So um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much of that was actually Peter Green, but uh, they say it's Peter Green. So well, who am I? Who am I to say different? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> But this cancel culture is out of control. Oh, it's crazy. Wineys is going to change. Wine and Kugel's Brewing Chippewa Falls is going to change their logo. Hey, what, what is their present logo? It's a Native American woman. Okay. And it's not a offensive. It's just a face. Um, I guess they... They want to update it. They've made the decision to retire the symbol of the Native American woman that they have previously used with the brand. They will begin to replace their existing creative uh, with new. Im Im we will begin to replace our existing creative with new imagery. That doesn't make sense. And we'll continue to make these changes through 2021. So, I mean, Land Lakes did it because they had a you know a Native American woman as their logo. Now Chippewa's doing that. Or uh -huh. Winey's, not Chippewa, but Winey's, which is in Chippewa Falls, Wine and Kugels. Yeah. We call it Winey's for short, but, I mean... Oh, okay, there's the logo. All right. They've been in business since 1867. And it's been great for 100 plus years, 130, yeah. 150 years, whatever. Um <laughs> I mean, I don't know if well, they got you, you, complaints. You, yeah. I think they just decided to do that. You, what, what, what I read today was um, on this is, uh -huh. is Trader Joe's said, fuck you. We're not changing our brand names and, and uh -huh. not, uh, because apparently they have a, a Mexican food brand or a line, which is yeah. uh, Trader Jose's. 
Uh, oh, okay. And, and they have an Asian food brand, which but is... But Jose is kind of a derivative of Joe, isn't it? Sure, but they also have I mean, a they also have a, a, an Asian food line, which is like Trader Wang or something like that. I, I don't oh, know. okay. Um, and, they, and they said, too bad. We're not changing our brands. Our brands aren't offensive. You want to be offended by them? You're going to be offended by them. I don't... Right. We don't, we, we don't care. So, hooray for Trader Joe's, whether they hold that, you know, whether that... They, that stands up or not, we'll we'll see, but uh Right. Yeah. So um at least uh, I, I, it, I think I it, just think people are trying to be sensitive and not be overly portrayed sensitive. as being right. And it not be portrayed as racist. You know, with, and I just think it's over the top. I uh, mean yeah, you could be offended by whatever you hell want to be offended by. Right. And that will happen no matter what you do. People are gonna be offended about something. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a, like, I, I'm offended by this. Okay. <laughs> Amazon's uh, what 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 uh, uh, Leo? Uh, you, you, what do you, you hear? Leo? Leo, law enforcement officer. Yeah, but no, it's low Earth orbit. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, O-E. Oh, L- well, Earth orbit. Never mind. Yeah. Leo. Yeah. Okay. A- Amazon's Leo ambitions include. 5G and a $10 billion price tag. So Amazon said it's going to spend $10 billion to send thousands of low Earth orbit satellites into space. The company's goals for the project range from selling Internet connections directly to consumers and businesses to providing 4G and 5G backhaul connections to wireless network operators. So Amazon's got to put all these uh, satellites up there and beam 5G down on your head, which is why it's offensive to me. All right. Uh, So the e-commerce giant disclosed its LEO plans shortly after the FCC, with a 5-0 vote, approved its application. Uh, Dubbed the project Kuiper, like the Kuiper belt. Um, mm-hmm. uh, to send up to thir- 3,236 satellites into space. Amazon now joins, officially joins the likes of SpaceX, Starlink, OneWeb, and others in launching LEO satellites for speedier Internet services. Now, I don't know how many, all of these various companies, all, how many satellites they're all putting up there in space. But, a lot of them. I mean, that, the, 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 Amazon's putting up over 3,000. You gotta imagine that that SpaceX also put up at least that many, if not yeah. more. Um, it's crazy. It's it's it's, it's crazy. Uh, all all these guys they're 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 beaming five G down on your head. Um, yeah, and, it's not good for you. No, I I don't know. I don't know if it's just the 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 way things are going, but uh, I just don't feel like I have. I just feel like blah, like nothing's going on. There's nothing to do. Everything's just so weird. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's just something I've noticed. All right. It says, in addition to providing ground station service directly to customers, Project Kuiper will also provide backhaul <laughs> solutions for wireless carriers, extending LTE and 5G services to new regions. Uh, Amazon wrote of its LEO efforts, Together, these projects will expand broadband access to more households in the U.S. and around the world. So the whole world will get 5G'd so they can make a few extra bucks. A few extra million hundred. Right. A few extra hundred billion bucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I find that offensive. I'm offended by that more than I am by any picture of an Indian lady. Uh, Native American lady, excuse me, uh, on, on that. Um, so now, we all know that the post office is very slow, right? Yes. Well, well I guess. Okay. Well, it's generally, typically much slower than than other services and sometimes extremely slow. But now, apparently, they're not slow enough. So the post office, <laughs> post office is reportedly slashing hours as a cost-saving measure, and this too, by the way, has the uh, the, the lefties all upset and pissed off. Do you know why? 
No, why? <laughs> well, the lefties want all these mail-in uh, mail ballots to go through uh, in November. Right. Right? Well, well I know it's about I knew it was about that. Well, well, so they point out directly in here, uh well not in this one but in the uh, AP one. I have two different ones on this. Um uh that that Trump's new postmaster general decided to uh <laughs> decided to uh cut hours as a cost saving measure and then say, "Well, you know, we'll just we'll we'll, we'll just deliver the crap the next day if it doesn't if we, if we can't get it done in one day, it'll be done the next day." Now, uh, you know, uh, people you remember the going postal thing? Um Mhm. Mm yeah, well, so this this has got to be uh got to go, got to be going to drive many of them more postal because the workload on them Oh yeah, they're, they're still going to have to get the same amount of work done, and they're just going to have to do it in less hours. So um, it says anyway, they're slashing hours at numerous branches across the country, part of a, a slate of cost-cutting measures as a long-standing agency is enacted of late to help shore up historically precarious finances. Uh, branches have allegedly instituted the changes with little or no communication. Uh, that uh, an employee claimed that in a one region of Western Virginia, 26 offices are being forced to reduce hours from the typical eight-hour weekday schedule to under four hours per day. <laughs> less than half, less than half of their time, and they still got to get the same work done. Uh, you can imagine your your mail. Well, it's going to be slower and slower now. Well, that and it's all got to go to the wrong place too. Your mail's going to be delivered to somebody else. Because I yeah. mean, these guys are going to have to bust ass, try and get stuff done, and they're going to make a lot more mistakes. Um, also, they are going to be closing a, a bunch of offices, too, a bunch of post offices. Um, I don't know if the list is official out there yet, but there's that uh, in uh, this one here. Um, mail delays likely is a new post office uh, boss pushes cost-cutting. Uh, so... Uh, this is the one they're, they're saying, oh, it's a Trump thing. Trump doesn't want that mail-in, the, the mail-in uh, ballot, so he's going to cut the post office back to to, re, to reduce the hours and, and make it so that that, that uh, people can't get their ballots out in time. Or, you know, I guess there's a deadline or whatever for uh, when your mail-in ballots can get there, whatever. Um, <laughs> so there'll be no more overtime, so they'll be pissed off about that. Um and it says, employees must adopt a different mindset. Yeah, what mindset is that? Double the work in half the time? <laughs> Who wouldn't be pissed? <laughs> Who wouldn't? So, you know, if you see more people going postal, um, I, I would not be surprised. So it says, uh, late trips will no longer be authorized. If postal distribution centers are running late, they will keep the mail for the next day when the workers only right. got, well, and the workers still uh, only got half the hour. So uh, the changes come a month after Postmaster General Louis D. Joy, a major donor to President Donald Trump, took over the sprawling mail service in a memo titled "PMG Expectation and Plan." So uh, this guy is a big donor to Trump. He takes over as Postmaster General, and uh, and then he, <laughs> and then he cuts back the hours on all these people. Great. Uh, just in time to piss off the lefties. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're always pissed off, though. <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Talk to you later. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. They are always pissed you off. You can't make them happy. They're never, yeah, I mean. The, the, there's nothing, right? Right. In, unless everybody, you know, becomes a, a mega lefty, too. Right. Yeah. Th that's the only thing that makes them happy. Oh, you're going right. to be a mega lefty. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. Yeah. Uh, then they're okay with you, but yeah. if you don't agree with all that they they agree with, then you're no good. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> I'm just tired of it. It's just... All right. Well, here's something that's a little more... Yeah. Little okay. Mo a little more interesting, a little more fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know that you could actually do this, but apparently you can. And they have the photos. They have the photos blurred out so you can't see. Not that I really wanted to, but... <laughs> I just, but since they blurred them out, it's like, hey, what are you doing there? Uh, anyway, so on the New York Post here, man who lost his penis due to a blood infection 
has a new one built on his arm. I've heard of them doing that before. And, and so they got a picture of a guy there uh, with, his, with his arm kind of extended and then a big blurry section where his penis is uh, growing on his arm. <laughs> well, that's the Postal Service one. I, <laughs> I didn't put the link in yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put the link in. Oh, God. <laughs> Pony, the Postal Postal Penis Service. All right. Uh, so anyway, a British, <laughs> uh, a British man whose penis fell off due to a severe blood infection had a new one built on his arm. He even got an extra two inches, according to the report. <laughs> oh, <laughs> grow me a big dick. <laughs> if you're going to uh -oh. grow a dick on my arm, make it. Make it. All right. Hey, so Malcolm McDonald, uh, not, not the actor, um, uh -oh. 45, a mechanic, suffered a horrific infection in his perineum, whatever, uh, perineum. Perineum. That, that turned his fingers, toes, and manhood black. Oh well, black shouldn't it be two inch extra inches anyway. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the rumor. All right, <laughs> I had struggled for years with an infection in my perineum, but I had no idea what could happen. Uh, the separated dad of two, blah blah blah. Anyway, when I when I saw my penis go black, I was beside myself. It it was like a horror film. I was in complete panic. I knew deep down it was gone, and I was gonna lose it. He said he was completely gutted when his penis just dropped off onto the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh uh, yeah, that would be That would that would that would that would throw you. <laughs> There's that article girl, or that Okay. That video on bit shoot. Okay, great, thank you. So that was in two thousand fourteen. But his testicles remained intact. According to the outlet. So he, he kept his balls. He just lost his dick. Uh, because I had been through the devastation of knowing I was going to lose it, I just picked it up and put it in the trash bin. <laughs> just throw, throw, oh, my your, God. Throw your dick out. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, so I went to the hospital, and they said the best they could do for me was to roll the remaining stump up like a little sausage roll. It was heartbreaking. So like a Vienna sausage, I guess. Uh, uh, McDonald says he became a recluse and began drinking heavily. I don't blame you. Uh, for two years after losing my penis, I felt a shadow of a man. You're not a man! Uh, <laughs> my life really fell apart because I had no self-confidence. I drank too much. I didn't see my family and friends. I just don't want to have a, to face up to it. But he found out from his doctor about the so-called penis master... Professor David Ralph of London's University College Hospital. Uh, the, the phallus expert. Phallus, that, that's a great job title. Yeah, what are you? I'm a phallus expert. Uh, famously created a bionic penis for Andrew Wardle, who was born without one. Well, wouldn't that make him a girl? I don't know. Anyway, um, it gave me a glimmer of hope that I could go back to being a normal bloke. Uh, Ralph uh, said he could perform an arm graft procedure, which would take up to two years. Fortunately, he received funding for the procedure because it would eventually allow him to urinate properly, not just oh, perform God. sexually, according to the report. It was all my Christmases at once. I was so emotional because it was a chance at a new start, he said. I wasn't worried about the procedure because I had seen what Professor Ralph and his team could do. As far as I was concerned... They were miracle workers, and I was up for anything that could give me my willy back. <laughs> not, not having a penis felt awful. It's, it's, it's most men's worst fear. I don't think most men even can think about it or consider no, it. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not like something, well, my dick's going to fall off. Uh, anyway, for me, I was never worried about sex because I already had two children. Really? That's that's your that's your concern about sex? Is you already have two kids? Anyway, whatever. Uh, it, it was always more about my self <laughs> confidence and simple things. Like you, if it's only about having two children, why'd you get the extra two inches? Uh, McDonald also decided to request an extra two inches on the sixty-five thousand dollar appendage. That's one pricey little dick. <laughs> yeah, they were happy to listen to me or listen to what I wanted to be like, uh, which was amazing. Not many can say they have a designer penis. 
<laughs> Ralph Lauren penis. All right. Uh, surgeons, <laughs> <laughs> surgeons formed a new manhood with its own blood vessels and nerves using the skin flap on the left arm of the right-handed man. They created a urethra and installed two tubes inflated with a hand pump, allowing him to achieve an erection. You can read the rest for yourself there, but nothing like a man with a new penis to, to make him happy. I guess so. <laughs> I mean, it would be a big problem, though, just because, you know, yeah, I, I, the I peen, mean, I, the peen I, part would yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I don't know. You well, know. Well, what, 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 yeah, it, I mean, it would it'd be messed up. Yeah, it would. To have you your, know, to have your dick just fall to the floor one day. I'm glad that he uh, got help there. Yeah, I am too. Um, I, I mean, wow, that's um. Yeah. Okay, so I got that link for the uh, American doctors, so the uh, Americans Frontline doctors. So yeah. That, okay. Good. I'll put that in. Yeah, he could have had well, a grow. They, yeah. Yeah, he could have had a grow on his forehead, arms, I guess. He could have been a real, could have been a real dickhead. Yeah, <laughs> literal. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. God. Okay, let's hear some more music. Um, All right, let's do that. Uh, I, I know it hasn't been that long since the last set, but right. I, I wanted to play these. Uh, I forget who was mm -hmm. talking about it earlier there in the chat. I don't know. Anyway, you'll you'll see you'll see what it is. All um, right. And I, I think they were talking about deniers of a different type. But uh, these are de okay. these are deniers of, of this type. And okay. I, too, I, too, I must admit, and I do admit often and freely, I'm a denier. Okay. <laughs> Leo, uh, Leo Maracchioli there coming, qu covering Queen's Fat Bottom Girls. That's his latest ad. Just see, he puts a new song out every Friday. Oh, uh, man, it's funny, funny stuff. I like Leo. All right, before that, we had Smash Mouth doing the, be the, the Monkeys, I'm a Believer. I didn't know Smash Mouth did the Monkeys, I'm a Believer, uh, but I found that today when I was looking up I'm a Denier. That's and, from uh, the movie Shrek, I think. Okay, I, I had no idea. Yeah, they did a, a cover of that for the movie Shrek. All right, anyway, it was cool. I, I, I enjoyed their version of I'm a Believer. Mm -hmm. And before that, we had uh, Minnesotans for Global Warming, M4GW. Uh, yeah. Do it, I'm a denier. I'm a denier. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to be, though. Oh, boy, I know. Yeah, Freakers at the Ball. All right. <laughs> I mean, so many people have been... Just wear a mask, and then we can get this over with. Get back to normal. Yeah. It's like, that, they're not going to stop with that. I'm a freaking denier. You know? Yeah. I just... Uh... I know. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, hey, don't do that. Don't be starting <laughs> Don't be starting before I tell you to. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, wow. Anyway, you got any plans? Yeah. You got any weekend, weekend style plans? No. Anything? There's live music tomorrow, my friend Nick, but I doubt I will uh, go there. <laughs> oh, okay. I just... It just doesn't. I don't know. Just doesn't, it's not the same. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. The mask thing and just the whole distancing thing and I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. It's yeah. outside, but still, still. Yeah. I mean, that's my friend Nick, but that's the musician that's playing. But I don't know. I yeah. just I'm not. I'm not into it right now, you know what I mean? I, I understand completely. It's just so weird right now, you know? Sure. But I was going to say, I just came across this meme here, that deep breathing is one of the body's strongest self-healing tools. 
It lowers blood pressure. It reduces your heart rate. It decreases stress hormones. It oxygenates blood. It exercises the lungs. It increases physical and mental energy and improves immunity. Right. So, and we're not talking about breathing just from your lungs. Like most people breathe too shallow. Yeah. To really take a deep breath, it's got to be from like your belly. Okay. And it does work. All right. Like if you're stressed out or something, just take a deep when, when people say take a deep breath, uh-huh. there's a reason for that saying. But they don't mean just from your, your, your lungs. They mean start, you know, imagine it going from the bottom of your toes up to the top of your head slowly. You know what I mean? Right, right. And it does work. I'm just saying. And it's something that doesn't cost you any money. Right. Or anything. Yeah. You just take a deep breath. And I've been using this technique for a while. And it does work, so... Anything that will help you get through this crap naturally is a good thing. Yeah, I, I don't really think it's a problem, but I mean, what? I don't. I don't think you have to worry about deep breathing or whatever. No, I mean, I'm just talking. It's such a stressful time. Like it, it will help you, you know, release stress if you if that's what you're feeling or. Whatever, but it's a good, it increase, improves your immunity and it increases your physical and mental energy, so it has to be a good thing, right? I would hope so, yeah. I would think so. Yeah, I mean, just in general, it's a good thing. To I do. just thought I would pass it along because even one of the live streams I was watching, cool. you I don't got, know if it was Grace you, you, Potter or You got a link for who, that? What? So you got a link for that? I uh, know it's a meme. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. I was just reading the meme. Oh, all right. But I think it was Grace Potter or someone that said, take deep belly breaths. You know, um, and it does work. I'm just saying. I'm just passing it along. Take it or leave it. I don't know. Right, you know it works right. for me. So Also, take, 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 a, take a deep breath before you, like Cowboy said, before the next click, before you post whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially if it's an angry response to somebody or something. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. just I'll look for a um, a uh, a link here. All right, all right. So uh, I know we've all heard about this by now, but I just want to do uh, mention it to get it into the the blog. Um, here, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Doctor Fraudchi recommends wearing goggles. Yes. Uh, to, no. prevent, to prevent catching the corona bologna. So, uh, fuck you, Franchi. That's all I really got to say. But I, I don't. I don't really want to uh, share any of this. Uh, he says, "All right, now you got your fucking face mask training going. Um, now, now, now you got to get your your goggle training going, and don't forget your your uh, earplug going." Uh, <laughs> It's like an endless stream of bullshit uh, uh, that 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 comes from all this, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, thanks for the link. Um, yep. Uh, so so Fraudji says that. Okay. So here on on G Edward Griffin's Need to Know website, Need to Know dot News, mm-hmm. is information which will shock none of you. Va- yeah, sure. Vaccine companies partner <laughs> with MasterCard to merge vaccines with cashless money system. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bingo. Yeah, big. So a partnership between Bill Gates backed Gavi Vaccine <sighs> oh, Alliance God. and the biometric ID company Trust Stamp will test a digital identity system to be linked to MasterCard's click to pay system. The goal is to eliminate cash. The program will be introduced in West Africa and will be tied to the COVID-19 vaccine to be made mandatory in 2021. Your vaccine status will be updated as you receive more vaccines. Oh, God. Okay. (laughs) No vaccines, no money. Oh, fuck. That's the the ultimate... 
That's the ultimate control, G. Edward Griffin. Yeah, it is. So, uh, Dr. That's what they want to do. Dr. Pam's, Pam Popper's website against COVID-19 vaccine, which is makeamericansfreeagain.com, uh, a biometric digital identity platform that evolves as you evolve or devolve, uh, is set to be introduced in the low-income remote communities of West Africa thanks to a public-private partnership between Bill Gates-backed Gavi Vaccine Alliance, MasterCard, and the AI-powered identity authentication company TrustStamp. Uh, the, the, this, the program, which first launched in late 2018, will see TrustStamp's digital identity platform integrated into the Gavi MasterCard Wellness Pass, a digital vaccination record and identity system also linked to MasterCard's click-to-pay system that's powered by its AI and machine learning technology called New Data, N-U-D-A-T-A. Uh, MasterCard, in addition to professing its commitment to promoting centralized record-keeping of child immunizations, also describes itself as a leader towards a world beyond cash. And its partnership with Gavi marks a novel approach towards linking biometric digital identity system, vaccination records, and a payment system into a single cohesive platform. The effort, since its launch nearly two years ago, has been funded via a $3.8 million uh, dollars in Gavi donor funds, in addition to a match donation of the same amount by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, <laughs> oh. In early June, Gavi reported that MasterCard's Wellness Pass program would be adapted in response to the Corona Bologna pandemic. Around a month earlier, MasterCard announced that TrustStamp's biometric identity platform. Uh, would be in integrated uh, into Wellness Pass as Trust Stamp System is capable of providing biometric identity in areas of the world lacking internet access or cellular connectivity, and also does not require knowledge of an individual's legal name or identity to function. The Wellness pro Program involving Gavi, MasterCard, and Trust Stamp will soon be launched in West Africa and will be co uh, coupled with the corona vaccination program once a vaccine becomes available. Ain't that sound wonderful? Oh, no, not really, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, we have to uh, do our last set here. All right. And so we're going to do that right now, and... Um, We'll be back after this. Okay. To say a few more things at ya. Throw a All few right. throw a few more things at ya. Are you okay. are you down with the sickness? No. <laughs> Covering Black Betty first all. I love that version. It's so cool. Anyway, before that, we had the Rolling Stones doing Tumbling Dice off of their Ladies from Ladies and Gentlemen uh, DVD uh, uh, there. Uh, Blu-ray, by the way. Uh, anyway, before that, Pokey Lafarge and Fuck Me Up. And we kicked it off with Disturbed and Down with the Sickness. Uh, yeah. Are y'all down with the sickness? <laughs> Oh, man. All right, I gave myself enough. No, enough. I'm not. No, no. Yeah. Anyway, I um, hope you all have a great weekend out there. And, uh, yeah. Stay away from the other people because they're all nuts. And um, <laughs> they're fucking crazy. Pretty much. <laughs> they're fucking crazy. So stay away from them as best as you can. Uh, you know, it's not always possible, obviously. I mean, for example, I may need to go to the grocery store. Ah! Right. <laughs> I hate when that happens. I know. But it's been a month, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
So tomorrow on uh, RLM Radio here, you're going to have Slash and hopefully Grammy at the dark table at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, by the way, if you didn't catch the uh, the, the, the uh, dropping your coil show today, because it was a mm-hmm. day a day late, um, uh, the, the podcast's up, and uh, it's also up there on the BitChute channel. So nice. uh, check that out. Um, and uh, I'll be on Sunday morning, my normal time, noon Eastern, with the blues and the trivia, all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah. And then uh, following me, is, as always, is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up that big old can of whoop-ass. Hey, Hal, how you doing out there? Um, <laughs> yeah, Vinny said hi too, Hal, by the way. Um, and then uh, ch- check the, uh, oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for uh, Monday's night's It's All Connected program. I had scheduled uh, uh, for the Gulf of Tonkin, but I think I'm going to skip that episode. Okay. It's, it's such a limited episode. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and, and and we'll see. I, I may go back to the go and do the gold standard um, stuff, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'll change change it around a bit. We'll see. I'll, I have to decide yet. Um, Anyway, check the schedule on RealLibertyMedia.com, RLMRadioX.XYZ, and uh, find out what else is playing throughout the week. Yeah. You'll, you'll check be, out. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Um, <laughs> all right. I guess that's all. Unless you got anything else? No, I don't. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Yep. Peace. Peace.